Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you are watching this. Myself and Ryan, we are just jumping on to give you a quick update on the budget. So I don't know if any of you were sad or were interested in what the budget was going to say. So I was staying up and I watched the budget for that good old hour with Rishi talking about it. I don't know about you, Ryan. I did indeed. <laughs> like you said, I don't know if that's, uh, if that's sad, but yes, we did. Yeah. We want to make sure that we know what is happening within our property business. So we're always taking an interested look on what the government are changing or adapting within the budget. So we thought we'd just jump on and give a quick rundown and brief explanation of some of the changes specific to property, because there was a couple key indicators, which um, will affect us in our property investing. I'm sure you've had a lot of questions on this and I know we're probably a week behind, but just because we've had so many questions, we decided let's, you know, let's do a little stream and, uh, you know, just give a brief overview of how that affects us as investors. Definitely, definitely. So, um, as I don't know if some of you will be aware, but there is actually differences between England and Scotland. Again, Scotland like to be different, England like to be different. So there is always a slight change and difference. And for myself and Ryan, we both invest across the country. So we both invest in Scotland and in England. So that's why it's quite prominent for us to know both changes, both rules and regulations to make sure that our businesses are running correctly because it does not fit one model across the country. There are slight adaptions to that. So we're going to run through just a couple of them just to make sure that you guys are aware in case you were not. So uh, we'll start off. Um, the government came out saying that they're going to be um, pumping a lot of money into lenders to give 95% mortgages. So in a lot of cases, people think that's fantastic for home buyers. 95% mortgage, which means there's only a 5% deposit. There is one caveat to that. Yeah. So within the market just now, and for the majority of lenders who I am aware of and who I've spoken to my broker about, the lenders are not um, willing to pay and give a mortgage to people who have been on furlough. So most of the people who are looking for a 95% mortgage because they do not have a big enough pot of deposit to pay for their own home, will be looking to use this service. However, the majority of the lenders that are in the market right now for residential, they are not accepting furlough payments that people have been taking over the last six months, eight months, however long it has been to get that mortgage. So even though the government are bringing in something amazing for a lot of home buyers, on the flip side, people aren't actually able to get this 95% uh, mortgage because lenders will not accept it. So it's one big thing which a lot of people were thinking it's going to be really positive. There's going to be a lot of home buying and purchases, but realistically, it will probably flatline and stay the same. I don't know if you would agree with that, Ryan. Definitely. I, I mean, I don't think we're going to see uh, a difference in the stock levels. You know, um, what it might mean is some people will be able to bring forward their plans. They don't have to save as much now um but it's also worth noting that there is a threshold anything uh under six hundred thousand pounds falls into this 95 percent loan to value anything over that uh it unfortunately doesn't so if you are buying further down in you know south london way a lot of those prices are over the six hundred thousand pound threshold unfortunately that's not going to apply to those people um it's for first-time buyers and existing homeowners. Um, but what that does mean, like I said, that could push, you know, people's plans forward. So in Scotland, the average price of a property is 160,000, which means just based on that, that's only an 8,000 pound deposit, which isn't a lot, you know, so so that's going to obviously help a lot of people out in a big way. Definitely. And you've always got to remember, you have to do your analysis and your research on the, the uh, areas that you are buying you need to look at that average salary because if you don't know 50 percent of the population their average salary is about twenty four and a half thousand to twenty five thousand pounds so right now the government have all or the 
the lenders have actually changed the multiplier rates of how much you can get as a mortgage. So previously you'd be getting 4.5 times your salary, but the banks have actually reduced it to four times multiplier of your salary. And then if you're buying as a couple, so you have multiple incomes together, you join the couple's incomes together, then they're only going to be doing to 3.5 times multiplier of your salary. So you've just got to be aware, as Ryan said, about the Scottish market, that the average home buying is around about 160,000. Yeah. Then who is your demographic that is actually going to be able to afford to buy these types of properties? Yeah. And they're going to do their affordability tests too. You know, they're still going to make sure that they can, uh, that the people can afford that. Um, it's also worth noting that, you know, obviously the government stepping in and trying to help as much as they can. Um, if, if, if there are any defaults on these payments, because these are high risk mortgage products for lenders. So if there are any defaults, the government have actually promised to actually step in and take, uh, take on some of the you know the missed payments you know to to help out those lenders so they're trying to give the lenders some surety but as we saw in the you know when we went into lockdown last year um what the government said and what the lenders did didn't necessarily always match up and that's why jordan said there there are going to be loopholes that you're going to need to jump through so for example if you have been furloughed you you might have an issue there you know so um you need to make sure that your brokers you know on it but this is also this this applies more to the residential market um you know and and first time buyers something else um that that they obviously announced which which affects us uh, in a big way at the moment especially with with stock level and and competition out there is the stamp duty holiday and the extension of that so um in england they've they've extended the the stamp duty holiday until the end of june um now the threshold on that is five hundred thousand pounds. So anything five hundred thousand pounds and below, there's the stamp duty holiday on that. After the after the end of June, they've then extended that to the end of September, but the threshold comes down from five hundred thousand to two hundred and fifty thousand. So so up until the end of um, April, or, or up until the end of March, sorry, you will have a an extension on the 500,000 pounds and then it'll be extended until uh, end of September on 250,000. After that, it just drops down to the, the normal rate of 125,000. In Scotland, um, that comes to an end at the end of March. It, that, there's no extension on that. It drops back down to the, the 145,000 threshold, uh, but it is worth noting that for first time buyers, there is that extra relief of up to 175,000. So they still get the extra relief, but they are ending the stamp duty holiday up in Scotland at the end of March. So for some of you that might not be aware, then obviously you've got Westminster as one government and then you've got Holyrood for in Scotland as other. So the budget and a big pot of money got sent and has been given to Holyrood and they are allowed to do what they please with it. So as Ryan said, Scotland are reducing the extension and they're doing it as planned and ending at the end of March. So by the 1st of April, you're back to your 145,000 as your um, stamp relief threshold. So um, for those of you that might not be aware as well, there is a difference between Scotland and England for the percentage of stamp or as Scotland likes to call it, LBTT. So in England, the, um, they're charging 3% on stamp duty. But in Scotland, any stamp is going to be 4%. So you just have to make sure that you are aware because that extra percentage can be quite significant depending on the deal you're looking for. Um, so in Scotland, with the government, they are, as Ryan said, not going to extend that um, stamp, the LBTT relief. But instead, they're going to be putting that money into council tax instead. So for the population, they're going to try and keep the living costs down. So they're putting a freeze on the council tax of properties. So if you are buying a property and you're not able to get an exemption because it's already been empty for a year's period and you'll be having to pay your 100% levy council tax, then there will be a freeze on that for the same sort of time frame up till the, the um, up till September time. So 
again, just something to be aware of to make sure that you are knowing your numbers because these slight differences can make or break a deal. And obviously we want to make sure that you guys are doing the correct due diligence and making sure that the numbers are spot on to get a good deal. So Ryan and I, with all our mentees, we want to make sure that you guys are all getting the best deals you can to then bring that income and passive income coming through your books nice and quick. So those are just some of the differences. Um, a lot of you have asked, oh, God, the, the properties are going so quick. They're on the market and selling again. Yes, it is difficult for all of us out there. Again, we are all um, dealing with the same type of properties that you guys are as well. The good thing is the sooner the population goes back to work and the sooner that the government open up the market for people to go on holidays, people to go out spending money, the better it is for us investors. Because right now, the population have been sitting on their bums watching TV shows thinking they can do it. They do not understand the concept of refinancing, pulling back out your money, money in, money out deals or percentage of RIs. So they're just happy to park the money into a property for a long period of time, not realizing the actual implications of that. So the sooner we've got the population back to working and actually being active again, the better it is for us investors. Um, another point which was raised in an article recently was about the um, any voids or any uh, repossessions that were actually able to happen from the government. So they put a stop on any evictions that could happen within the market. And that has been for a period of time. So there was an article that came out that said between the month of April 19 to December 19, then there was almost 22,000 evictions within the population of the UK. Whereas within the same month of April 2020 to then December 2020, there was only couple hundred four or five hundred evictions for certain reasons so that's a huge amount of stock that we've not been able to get our hands on because of the government doing these restrictions so again that that restriction has extended by rishi they have extended that for a short period of time but when that does come to an end then yes there will be a lot more properties available because some landlords will be sick of their tenants now some might not be able to have paid the rent so all that those landlords, and most likely they're the old school landlords, they just want to get rid and sell up shop. So that's when we as investors will be able to swoop in and try and buy all this stock available. Yeah, I mean, just keep taking action. I think that's the biggest thing, you know, if you out there, um, you know, talking to agents, making those connections, you are putting yourself in a position to, to get a deal. If, if the deal presents itself, you're in a position to take the opportunity to do that. So, so just keep taking action, be persistent, be patient, you know, um, and it, it's all about, you know, like we always say, operating at that 10 out of 10 level rather than a seven out of 10, you know, you have to get out there and do it. There's only so much you can do in front of your computer, you know, get out, take the action. Um, so, that's probably the best advice we can we can give you just you know be patient and the deals the deals will come uh they they've been saying that on average you know from from the time a deal gets accepted to completion at the moment because of the pandemic because solicitors are having to work from home and you know conveyancing's all happening from from home you know surveyors that type of thing it's obviously taking longer for com you know properties to complete so at at, mo at the moment we're seeing a, an average of about four months, uh, which, you know, but if you're a cash buyer, if you're saying the right thing, remember, we're buying, we, we're trying to emphasize speed and volume. If we can raise the money, go in cash buyers, um, that that speeds up the process. You know, that puts us in the driving, in, in the driving seat. So, you know, um, we, we, we just put in an offer on, on, a, on a repossession, on a corporate sale. Yes, there was a lot of competition, but the one thing I told my solicitor was make them aware that we are cash buyers. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get it, but I think we stood, we came close. We stood a good chance, but we're just trying to put ourselves in that position, you know, that that we can take the opportunity when it presents itself. So we, we said emphasize the fact that we are cash buyers, which is what they did. And it took them quite a while to make a decision on that. Um, because I think, like I said, I think we were in with a chance there. Um, 
but there was there was quite a few people that that bid on that one so um you know it's not going to stop us from trying that's for sure and, and then that's thing you'll be straight out there hunting for a next deal exactly exactly it, like i said it's not going to stop us so so just keep going you know be, be patient and follow follow the process that's that's what it's about that's it from myself and ryan hopefully yep. that was beneficial for some of you who are unaware of the slight changes that were happening again it is always really good to keep up with current affairs and what is changing in the markets um so you should always have your knowledge and it is always um really beneficial if you do know this knowledge because when you are speaking to potential investors if you're speaking to your estate agents they will then realize that you are one level or even 10 levels above the rest of the competition because you know this knowledge and a lot of the amateurs who you might be having to compete with don't actually have much of a clue so make sure that you are that higher level and there will be uh, rewards that will probably come to you so hope that was useful um it's been a pleasure as always ryan seeing you thanks soon. jordan you too and we will all see you guys very very soon